stand if you are able for the lighting of the candles. Jenny and her father, we give you all, we give all of you a special welcome and pray you may be blessed by today's service. Our sponsors for today's service is the Vosbridge family in celebration of a successful Trump retreat. If you have any announcements, you may come forward and do so now. Hello, I'm Emily Hall. I'm the choir director. Hi, Emily. Um, hi. <laughs> um, I just wanted to remind everyone that um, we're always welcoming new choir members. We meet from 6 to 8 um, on Thursday evenings. Um, if you want to just come for cantata, come at 7. Um, the first hour we spend doing stuff for church. Um, and also the youth choir is going to meet after church today. Thank you. Good morning, Jefferson. Good morning. Um, my name's Al Mosier, and uh, just a couple things. One, John Smith's daughter got married Friday. Congratulations, John. And uh, by the way, for today's presentation, it would be helpful if you didn't applaud because it just simply goes to our heads and we're not worth much after that. Before <laughs> Oh, that's true too, Tom. Anyway, uh, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, 
morning. I'm Maddie. I'm the Children's Ministry Director. I just wanted to thank everyone who came out to our Trunk or Treat event. It was a huge success. We had about 100 kids come. Um, it was awesome. It was great weather. So I just wanted to thank everyone who came, who participated, or who set up a trunk. It was um, a lot of fun. And um, next week, we will be starting a, uh, we're starting a junior youth group and a youth group. Um, our junior youth group is from kindergarten to fifth grade, and our youth group is from sixth grade to twelfth grade. So if you're interested, it will be from 5.30 to 7.30? I think that's what we said. And we're going to have a pizza party. So if you're interested, come on out from 5.30 to 7.30. It'll be a lot of fun. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Rich Foltz here. Uh, just a reminder on the craft show, uh, November 30th. Uh, this year, uh, anybody still looking for tables, uh, see myself and Sandy, uh, and we'll get you set up. Uh, thank you. Can you hear it now? Yes. yes. So we've been scurrying behind, around behind your back so that you wouldn't know how much we appreciate you. So we have, um, everybody has pitched in and we have a gift for you and your family. And we have a couple of cards here. Now, a lot of people have signed them, but I'm going to put them back out after church, so anybody who has missed signing it may sign them. I'll put them out on the um, Welcome Center. And when church is over, you have to go directly to the fellowship hall. No wandering, no talking to other people. <laughs> directly to the fellowship hall, because I've been told that nothing will happen there until you show up. So. Oh, and your family too. You need to bring them as well. Okay. Okay. Well, whatever you did, um, really surprised, um, um, touched, um, overwhelmed, um, lost for words. And I want you to know that I truly appreciate being here and I'm honored to be your pastor and I speak on behalf of my family, um, Lorna, my wife Annie who is conducting the service today and, and Japheth, you know, who uses his skill in his own way, he um, uses his talent um, in this congregation. We're, we're very pleased to be here as a family to be able to share um, that which God has given us with you and to and to be blessed by by you as well. It's not a it's not a one way street. Uh, we've come a long way um, from the Caribbean to be um, to be in ministry here, and and we feel like you have become our new family um, away from home. So thank you so much. We truly appreciate your love and your expressions of appreciation. And I will be obedient, and my family will um, follow as well. We will come immediately to the fellowship hall, and I trust that as many of you as possible will be present. Um, I, I hope I'm not overstepping um, by expressing a very special welcome to a special gentleman today. May I, may yeah. I, may I go ahead and say welcome to Joe. <laughs> um, Emily, our choir director, um, was engaged in July, and Joe is the person to whom she's engaged, her fiance. So we welcome you, Joe. Um, we feel that you're part of our family as well. And, and just very quickly before we continue, um, today is supposed to be Laity Sunday. Now, I wasn't aware of that. When we arrange this service where the men are going to be making special presentations and where my wife is going to be the, 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 um, the 
worship leader. So on this Laity Sunday, I say a very special welcome to my wife as worship leader and to the men of the back row, the back row men and company. We are welcome you today as you lead the service and I look forward to what you will share. Um, on Saturday, we are going to have our church conference and everyone is welcome to be a part of that conference. 10 o'clock on Saturday, the pastor from State Street, um, Reverend Linda Harris, is going to preside. Uh, we'll be presenting reports, appointing trustees, and looking at the list of persons who will be serving in various roles for, the, for, the, for next year. So we invite you to come and, and join in the discussion on the state of the work um, of the Lord of God in this congregation. Please come, 10 o'clock, Saturday, um, the day before we turn our clocks back. And then on Tuesday, Tuesday of this week, there will be a service for the late Barbara A. Knopp, who died a few days ago at the Seneca Manor um, Nursing Home. This service will take place at Foster's Funeral Home, calling hour from 10 to 11, and then the service begins at 11. The burial will take place at um, the cemetery across from Foster's Funeral Home. So you're welcome to join in that service. And may God bless you and bless us all as we worship together. Have a good day. Thank you, ma'am. I'm going to wait to see if my husband is going to make his way forward straight. I know he can't walk straight. <laughs> He's going to stop and talk to somebody or somebody's. <laughs> so let's see what happens. Let, no, let us now stand for a responsive psalm. Number 84, reading from verse 1 to verse 8. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord, the God of hosts. My soul longs to give thanks for the words of the Lord. My heart and my flesh sing for joy to the living God. Even the sparrow finds a home, and the swallow a nest, a nest for herself, where she may lay her young at your altars, O Lord, O Lord God of hosts, my King and my God. I hear those who live in your house, ever sing your praise. Happy are those who dwell, happy are those whose strength is in you, in whose heart are the highways of Zion. As they go through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. The early rain also covers it with pools. They go from strength to strength. The God of gods will be in Zion, will be seen in Zion together. <coughs> Hear my prayer, O Lord God Almighty. Listen to me, God of Jacob. Remain standing. Heavenly Father, let us share the joy of the psalmist who said, I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. May every opportunity offered to worship you in your house. Find us eager to join in the hearing of your word, in singing your praise, in lifting up our hearts to you in prayer. May your Holy Spirit bless the earth of worship in your house, that we may be refreshed after the toils and burdens, the sins and failures of the past week. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 We now sing the Lord's Prayer using the traditional tune.
each other by passing the peace. children to the front as we sing Yahweh we adore you. Veterans Day. That's right. Veterans Day. And as I said before, my son wanted to become a veterinarian so he could march in the Veterans Day parade. But that didn't work out. But anyways, we salute the men and women who have served in our military and who literally, of many, many thousands of them, have given their life to defend this country for its freedom. That's what a symbol of this country is, is that American flag. How many know what June 14th is? Uh, it's a summer day, right? No, no, after Memorial Day. A, a lady in Buffalo was a teacher, and she's the one that introduced this day called Flag Day. Hey, hey, congratulations. Ah, that's great. All right. Well, that's Flag Day. Now, when I was a young boy growing up, uh, we used to stand up before school started, put our hand on our heart, our right hand, and we did the Pledge of Allegiance. Do you still do that today? Oh, great. Well, in that, in that, Pledge of Allegiance, there's part of it that says, one nation under God. We're going to talk a little bit about things like that today, okay? So hold on just a minute, and we'll, we'll, we'll do that. And, and on uh, July 14th, when I was teaching, we would go outside, and we would celebrate and honor our flag. Well, I want to talk to you this morning about that flag and one of the millions of incidences that happened with that flag. Okay? Won't take long. And some of you have already heard this story. So, he stood on this deck of this ship, this young man. For 25 hours, he watched the enemy ships bombarding a fort. A fort that was defending the third largest city in the United States at that time. And as he, stand, as he stood there, he realized that if that fort was going to surrender, the enemy forces 
would take over this country and we would no longer be the United States of America. It was in 1814, September 13th, that the British Navy was bombing Fort McHenry. And the city that they had to defend was Baltimore, Maryland. That's right. That's right. That's what it was. Well, he stood there. And he saw those bombs bursting in air. It got 25 hours, night came, and the bombs were bursting in air. And when the morning came, guess what was still standing? The flag. And he knew, he knew, if that flag was to fall, we would not be the United States of America anymore. You know what his name was? He was a young lawyer, very, very religious man. He loved to do poetry. His name was Francis Scott Key. Anybody ever heard of that? Any of you older children out there have heard of that name? <laughs> okay, yeah. That's what, that's what it was. And he was there. He was asked by the President of the United States to go to that ship and to deal with the prisoners of war because the British had captured some of our soldiers. So he was there and he witnessed this bombardment of Fort McHenry. Because the British, they were fighting us again. And they came and they took over Washington, D.C. What, what's Washington, D.C.? That's right. It's called our national capital. Uh, you know, one year I, I, I gave a quiz and uh, I said to my students, I'll give you five bonus points if you can tell me what D.C. stands for in Washington, D.C. Do any of you know what DC stands for? Well, this student, I got a student who said uh, Diet Coke. <laughs> and no, uh, it's the District of Columbia. So that's where our, our, our president is. And when the British came, they burnt Washington, D.C. down. They, burnt, they, they attacked the White House. And James Monroe was our president. And his wife, Dolly. Have you ever heard of Dolly Madison? It's not a uh, cookie or anything, it's, it's the president's wife. As the British soldiers came in the front door, she was running out the back door, but she wouldn't leave until she grabbed one thing. One thing. Oh my goodness, that's right. The portrait of George Washington. Congratulations, that's great. So, all right, very, very good. Well, anyways, after the, the battle was over, because the British gave up, they couldn't destroy the fort. Uh, Mr. Key, Francis Scott Key, rowed a boat to the fort. And there was this huge, boys and girls, it was a huge flag. It was 42 feet long and 30 feet wide. The stars in it were almost two feet high, and there it stood. But the commander of the fort said, oh, this was not the flag that you saw when the bomb iron was. No, no, this flag was too big. It took 11 people to raise that flag, and it was a rainy, rainy day, and it would have weighed 500 pounds. It was called the garrison flag. They had what was called the storm flag. But anyways, what I'm getting at is, throughout this, Francis Scott Key was very, very religious. Very religious man. He prayed, and he prayed to God that what his task was would be successful. And it was. The men were freed. Now, when we stand and we sing what's called the Star Spangled Banner, that's our national anthem, we only hear the first verse of that song. There are four verses, but every verse ends with, what do you think? The land of the free and the home of the brave. And in the very last verse, Francis Scott Key was such a religious man that he put a phrase in there, trusting in God. So th this, history, this history of our country, God is so involved in this. God is so involved in the history of our country. When we do the Pledge of Allegiance, there's his name, God. <clears throat> now, I'm going to end with this. I want, who can read? I want you to read what it says. Uh, no, one thing, uh, you've got to give it back. <laughs> my allowance for weeks. <laughs> okay, now, I want you to read what it says there. Right here. The United... Oh, in God we trust. Say that again. In God we trust. In God we trust. You know, that's what we're about. Francis Scott Key says we, we were, we were, we were 
a, a, a country, a Christian country. He, he even wanted to become what is called an Episcopal priest. That's a religion. We have an Episcopal church right here in Folk. It's over by the, the library. But he decided that he was going to become a lawyer. So when November 11th comes, I want you to just take a time. Now, guess what? You'll be off school. Did you know that? It's a national holiday. Just think about that flag. And I want you to think about the sacrifices that, that so many people have had done to them to defend our freedom. We're very, very fortunate, boys and girls. We live in a country that we can make choices. We can decide what church we want to go to. We have free speech. So I end with this. Yes? Very, very good. That's right. Very good. There was even a, a, a place up in New York where it was fought, wasn't there? Sackett's Harbor was a, was a place. So, Well, let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this day, and we thank you for the freedom that we have in this country. And you are so m much mentioned in everything we do in this country. We, we pray that as these boys and girls grow up, that they do allow you to become part of their life that as they walk through life, that you are walking with them. We love you, Lord. And in your name we pray. Amen. Thank you, boys and girls. And there you go. <laughs> now, um, there's one announcement here. Uh, it says here that, the, that there's an anthem, but there's not. Faith, not feeling. When everything is pleasant and bright, the things we do turn out just right. We feel without question that God is real. For when we are happy, how good we feel. But when the tide turns and gone is the song, and misfortune comes and our plans go wrong, doubts creep in and we start to wonder, and our thoughts about God are torn asunder. For we feel deserted in times of deep stress, without God's presence to assure us and bless. And it is when, then when our senses are real, we realize clearly it's faith and not feeling. For it takes great faith to be patient and wait, believing God comes not too soon nor too late.
Where there is love. Where there is love, the heart is light. Where there is love, the day is bright. Where there is love, there is a song to help when things are going wrong. Where there is love, there is a smile to make all things seem worth more worthwhile. Where there is love, there is a quiet peace, a tranquil place where turmoil cease. Love changes darkness into light and makes the heart take wingless flight. Oh, blessed are those who walk in love, for they also walk with God above.
God is real. I've never seen God, but I know how I feel. It's people like you who make him so real. My God is no stranger. He's so friendly each day, and he doesn't ask me to weep when I pray. It seems like I pass him so often each day. <clears throat> in the faces of people I meet on my way, he's the stars in the heaven, a smile on some face, a leaf on a tree, or a rose in a vase. He's winter and autumn and summer and spring. In short, God is very real, wonderful thing. I wish I might meet him much more than I do. I wish there were more people like you. softly played and as we gather our thoughts we present them to God our needs the needs of others 
our struggles and the struggles of others. Let us bring them before the throne of God in prayer. God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, will we not fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. We pray for those struggling with difficult situations. O oh, gracious God, we pray that you will grant them light in the darkness to enlighten their path. We pray that your spirit will be with them to lead them into truth and grant them your strength. We remember before you those who are sick we pray for those recuperating from illness or recovering from surgery, that your mercy, O great physician, will be with them, that they will experience physical healing. We pray, Lord, that you will grant us all that touch that can make us whole. And we lift up to you today, Sandy, recovering from a fall. Kim and Emma, who are facing certain medical issues. We pray for Lloyd, who will be undergoing surgery. We lift up to you, Mary Phillips, Tim Donovan, George Grants, David Dyack, Laurie, Vivian Somerville. We pray for all those whose names are listed in our bulletin uh, in their various circumstances. We pray, Lord, that they will know your presence with them and they will be assured that there is nothing not height, nor depth, nor any other creature that can separate them from your love. We pray for those who mourn that because you raised Jesus Christ from the dead, they will have hope and that blessed assurance that death is not the end of those who believe, who trust in you. And so today, Lord, we think of the family of, of Jill, Nop. Um, we pray for Jill and her family as they mourn the death of her mother, Barbara Nop. We pray for Barbara's soul, that she will rest in peace until she is raised to life immortal. And all others who mourn today, Lord, we pray that they will know your comfort and that they will know that you are with them. We thank you today for the Vosbury family, sponsors of our web ministry, that through their sponsorship, this service can reach others beyond this space that we occupy today. We join the Vosbury's in celebrating the, the wonderful event held yesterday, the trunk and treat or trunk or treat for our children. We thank you for Maddie and all who were involved in organizing this event and give thanks for all who participated and pray Lord that you will bless the work we are doing with the children and, and youth in this congregation, in this community, that you will prosper all that we do. 
Oh loving God, we thank you for today's experience, for everything that took place in this service. Thank you for our worship leader, Lorna, and we thank you for all who lead worship in this congregation that you will bless, inspire, and use them to your glory. Thank you for the men of our church who so ably led us in singing and, and in reflection. Thank you for our musicians. Thank you for our technicians and, and all who are here today. Bless us as we go from this place and make us a blessing to others, Lord, that your name will be glorified through us now and at all times, here and in all places, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. What a wonderful way to bring October month to a close. This is our final Sunday in October. Thank you so much for leading us so well today. And we look forward to the new month, November. We look forward to seeing you on Saturday. If you can make it, you're all invited to come and be a part of the church conference. Now hear these words as you go, my sisters and brothers. May the love of the Father enfold you. May the light of the Son enlighten you. And may the power of the Spirit empower you. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, go in peace to love and serve the Lord now and always. Amen.